Very well. Thank I'll call the minute to order at <coughs> six. Warner is not doing 100 miles. Excuse me. Well, I start, if I can start by eight, they can be about eight. I'm choked up on these. Uh, yeah. no Alright, let's get going here. 642 will bring the meeting to order. December the 6th. We have no correspondence and we have no minutes. Therefore, we will entertain our esteemed former colleague and guest this evening, Scott LeBlanc. Welcome, Scott. How you doing? We missed you. How you been? Very middling. What can we do for you? I come here tonight because I've been looking at that solar field across the street from me and they cut it well they cut the hill the banking they put in that is supposedly put in to hide the field from my house and they only cut it once this year and it looks like they hate a field and left the hay there and all the trees they put in front probably half of them should be removed and replaced and I, I you know in the end they didn't do enough What's, what's the street number of that one? That 91. That's 91. And I know, and I know when, we were, when I was going through the, before I was on the planning board, but I had gone to the planning board meetings with this solar field when it came in, and I had no objections to it. But I had said that initially there was supposed to be a 100-foot buffer from the road to the first panel. It was supposed to leave the trees there. That property, they took all the trees out. Their idea of fixing that was to put a, um, a bunker, basically a bunker, with trees on top. They wanted to put like uh, like cedar trees. I says, no, I don't want to see cedar trees. I want Christmas trees put. And they did, and they alternated it. But they put them in like in December. Half of them survived. Some of them, the wind blew so hard in the storms, they were leaning. And they never fixed it. So you get the low, I have to look at trees that look, look like a dog urinated on them and burnt them all on the very bottoms. Um, and if you walk around the entire outside of the fence property, they have trees on the far left abutment and in the back. There's a bunch of those trees that have died and they never replaced them. So I don't think they've lived up to what they said they were going to do. And um, I think they could have done a better job as me, as an abutter, having to look at it all day, 24-7. I shouldn't have to see it. There should have been 100 feet of trees that were there. Um, so that's my, my, that's my, my. Yeah, this is Diaz Bill. Well, <clears throat> I mean, I don't want to see somebody else having to have the same issue with a solar field coming into this town. I mean, I, I understand it's going to go to a 200-foot frontage versus a 100-foot frontage. Uh, that should make a huge difference in the solar panel for me. Where'd you hear that? I have my ways. What do you mean by front frontage? It's usually buffer. along the road. It's the buffer. From okay. the road to the first panel. Would be a buffer. Uh, well, I can't verify that. Well, we're we're in the process of reviewing this bylaw and also updating and reviewing all of the solar fields that we have in town to check on their compliance. And I know Tom has been doing a lot of work with uh, the financial end of it because of a couple of the situations that have happened with one or two. But this is good to know about what's going on here. So we'll just put this on the list and. You know, this this has got to have some kind of formal review process, and this is something we'll definitely discuss with them. Because I mean, it's been that's been an issue with them since they started, with them cutting down abutters' trees and not satisfying the abutters on either tried, side of them. I tried pulling the film I had up of when they cleared that lot, yeah. and they were supposed to leave a hundred foot buffer from the road, and when you, that machine's so fast, you couldn't make a phone call phone call fast enough to stop them. Yeah. Um, Tom, did you find the permit that we actually gave that 
One, yes. of them, one of them they didn't have the actual permit. No, I got I got the. Uh, well, the permit is a the is decision. the is the decision. Yeah, the decision. And all kinds of uh, attachments. You know, there's there's letters and correspondence yeah. and everything. I'm having trouble putting the whole package together, but I have the basics. I also have an as built drawing, but I don't have the original as applied for drawing. So when Scott says there was a hundred foot buffer, I can't confirm that. Um, there is a. We should have it, by the way. Oh, I know we should. should. We should have a lot of them, but I'm <coughs> digging and digging. We'll, we'll find them eventually. Um, the as built has a line across there, a setback line, seventy five foot, and it says. Um, uh, I'm not sure it uses the word buffer, but it uses this the word is, buffer. This is the embankment they put in. Yeah. Do you see this line here, dot, 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 setback line? Yeah. I don't know what that is, but they, it's not respected. The, the panels are closer to the road than that setback. The fence is closer to the road than that setback. Well, this was supposed to stay as woods, which was there, and it was gorgeous. Trees. I mean, they just wiped them out. What they ended up doing is using this as their staging area. When they cleared this lot, any tree that came down, they staged it here. Which was like, whoa, oh, what happened to the, I'm not supposed to see this thing. It <laughs> says, um, during the public hearing, the petitioner's representative, I'm reading from the uh, decision. Uh, the petitioner's representative, Burton Engineering, described the site as, the described, I think, means that the site has been previously partially lost. The majority of the area to be developed is second growth woods. Only the area needed for the construction of the solar array, its access road and shade band will be cleared of trees and shrubs. That means this isn't the shade band, obviously, because the sun's here, this right. is the south. Um, the other thing it says is the plan depicts screening along Williamsburg Road to remain. The plan also depicts the 50 foot side setback. It doesn't, I can't find a 100 foot setback. Um, I have to but I there is a, a 75 foot setback. And there is, of course, all this stuff got wiped out. So, um, of all the solars in town, this is the one that when you drive by, you it's really, a close, really it's close notice to the road. it. I mean, it's very visible. It's. Um, I told them when they put their fence in, I says, "You're not going to get away without seeing a fence, no matter what." I wanted that gate green, which they did do. Yeah, there's a reference I to uh, a little, but I mean not by a whole heck of a lot. The thing is, is when you stand in my driveway across the street, looking across, you don't see the field. <coughs> as soon as you go to my front door, any of my front windows, I got a gorgeous view of the entire field, <coughs> which I never wanted. You're, you're, wanted you're up a little higher too than the road. Yeah. Your house is here. Yeah. Well, I, what I can do is find the plan. Drawing and compare the proposal plan. The original. This is the as built. Yeah, I think I have that at home though. You have a plan? Yeah, so I have a copy of what well, it was. I'm sure we I have, don't have this. It's just a matter of me digging I have around. the ones as things were progressing. Well, they kept giving them to me. I even had aerial shots and all that stuff. Anything you have would be helpful. Um, I just want to see them. I mean, they were cutting this. They were they were they were mowing this thing in the dark. This fall. So they did, the, the hay, the, the, the grass, out there. the grass you're talking about. It, the mound is grass. Yeah. The grass was this high. Mm. Now, I did stipulate to them, I says, they put the Christmas trees on the mound, which over time, if you take care of them, they're going to grow. And then in the front between the mound and the stone wall, they put four hardwood trees, and they put um, lilac. I says, you, most you can do is beautify, beautify it. The first time the guy that they contracted to do all the weed whacking, first time in, took all the lilacs out. Bang! <laughs> because <laughs> he had the blade, you know, the steel blade on the yeah. weed whacking. And he never knew, it was never marked, and was the grass was this tall. Well, uh, let's find the documents. If you have anything, bring them in. If you know where I live, you can drop them off. Or you can bring them to the office and call me and tell me you dropped them off. Um, let me read them over and I'll compare a, I'll, I'll make a little table of planned actual 
and how much of the action was actually got approved versus just they just did it, you know. Yeah. Out of all the trees that are out here in the back, mm. there's quite a few on this line that are dead. Yeah, it shows them planted here. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't seem to carry a note, but it, the symbols certainly look like the. No, those those are those are Christmas trees. I think part of this whole thing that you the email that we got from Bill Murray has a, ma a maintenance schedule, a maintenance um, part of it. Is that Dean? It's usually that typically it's, you have yeah, that. It's a typical for the middle item is to yeah. have an operational maintenance person right. call. Yeah. It says how many times a year you can and all, and that you're responsible for coming in and checking mm. landscaping and replacing as necessary. Those kinds of things are mm. documented in those protocols. I have the basic yeah. document, but I don't have the attachments, which included protocols. And maintenance plans and decommissioning costs and all that <coughs> stuff. I, I, don't have I mean, I keep an eye on the field when I see a car pull up just to see what's happening over there sometimes. And I did it for them. I just said, you know, I had their number. If I saw something that wasn't their trucks. I says, but... Uh, what does it say, then, that we have the... Uh, in there well, we have the... We have the... <coughs> under 7.30, our condition... We've reserved the power to modify or amend the terms and conditions of this decision. So when Tom finishes his review and we find the original and whatever you can supply with us, he can then go ahead and begin a uh, process of communicating with them and explaining what we want to do. If they don't want to do it, then we'll hold a hearing and, and modify it. Okay. And I think that what we might want to do is bring in, in Bill Murray, who of course is the landscape architect, and have him review it and say, hey, this is what we want and this is how it's going to be done, and maybe have a third party do it rather than trust them again. Because I, you know, th there's the no question that they hit were a problem to begin with, with all of their, with their wetland violation, with cutting the, the butters trees and everything else that they did. They were not very responsive. So there's a new group that have ownership of this, basically a internal transfer, but they were much more responsive after they did that. On this one? On this <coughs> one, yep. Yeah. It started off with Seaboard, then it went into, what's the next one? Yeah, it's something LLC. It's a, they're, they're, KS. They're Indians. Mm -hmm. KS. Uh, I met some of them when uh, it was transitioning yeah, over. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Anyways, they've changed ownership, so we'll we'll get hold of them, and they, they have uh, they probably still have that lady who was the liaison, a young lady that was coming in and was yeah she was with the engineer I think no she was with Seaboard she's she out was of with Connecticut Seaboard. and uh, we'll get hold of her and we'll, we'll start you know, putting it together and see what we can do you know right now there's not a heck of a lot we're going to be doing in the winter but by the time spring comes around maybe right, we get a plan right. in that very good. That's all I have. I mean, yeah. Well, thanks for stopping by. <laughs> my wife has chewed one of my ears off on this, so I says I might as well do something with it now. I well, says, ah. you know, this is this is fine. We don't mind. Um, you got my emails about the other situation. Yep. All right. So that's all we got for you. But this is going to be a big review of all of these projects, and this will be part of it. That's oh, thank you. Story. Great. Okay, thank you, Scott. Yeah. Thank you, Scott. Have a good Christmas. Yeah, we you don't see you. Everyone. Merry Christmas. Keep on that. <laughs> Keep happy face. <laughs> nice evening, thank folks. Good night, Scott. Thank you. Nice evening. Good night. See our concerns? <laughs> I just tell him, Dean, yes. understand our concerns about the road. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they just got to make a yeah. sure. It's all eyeball stuff. I it's not, you know. And it's important because it's, uh, everybody's got a pair of them, you know. Oh, yeah, that's what, <laughs> that's what affects the neighbors. So <coughs> it is an important thing. This was a real tough one. Boy, they were, they were just abusive, basically, is what they were. But nevertheless... That's why some of the things we did for your projects have come.
come about. Anyway. All right. <coughs> well, we got a couple more minutes. So, since we can't start, can't start till seven. Yeah, talking about that. No, it's about three years since. Uh, and can I give you a new set of plans? Josh is the developer on this one, and maybe I can get you just a five-minute rundown. On another project? On the new project. Oh. oh. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> There's the, the submittal. The checks are in their envelope on the top. This is the stuff that we small major so files on. And this one is out on Old Westminster 14. Road. 14. Uh, 68 is down to the west there. Uh, this pink line is the subject parcel. Red, red line is our proposed fence around our field. There's a small wetland on the west side here, and that's the 100 foot buffer of the wetland. There's a, an existing driveway that comes up through the project from here, so we're going to use that as our entrance. Uh, the project itself. Is this the Lions property? Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. So this follows the basically where the existing drive comes up through. We'll have a short extension up there and equipment padding at the front of the project there. It's about 316 feet back to our modules in the front. All of this will, will remain. We'll have to clear a little bit for the interconnection and the driveway here near the roadway. Uh, there's about 4.7 acres total of clearing, mostly in the back. This is uh, on a fairly steep rise up through here. Uh, that's why the driveway is where it is. It's a little gentler rise. This is kind of steep. So the system will actually be up elevated quite a bit from the roadway and the residences that are down here along uh, Old Westminster. There is another residence that's further north of us. The original layout extended further up into the northern part of the site, but our designers were able to compress the, the footprint of the site. We, we had originally intended to extend up into the north area, but there's a residence that's very close to the property line up here, so we pulled it all south to give a better buffer. Will they be able to see it from that residence, the way you're doing? They should not be able to. I, I don't have the exact dimensions on here, but this is about 250 feet, so it's about 200 feet to the fence line from, from where their residence is. And that's uh, treed? It is, it's all forested right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm just driveway. using the color scheme here. What's the light green all about? Well, um, these are open areas, this lighter green. The dark green is where the forested areas are. Yeah, so. But uh, this was all forested up here as well. Okay, we'll, so we'll be clearing it's shown here. open, but it isn't open today. It is not. This is okay. all forested at the top of the But road. on the bottom, and that near that residence, it is open. It is open all the way to his that pr basically his property to his line. north property line. That's a field? Yeah, that's a, a lawn field area behind his house there. Now, this is sloped But it's up. Yeah, it's quite a bit of elevation change mm -hmm. between the residence of the at the bottom of the hill and where we'll be at the top of the hill. So and the scale on that one is? This one is at 44. 40 feet to the inch? 40 feet to the inch, yeah. So that looks like eight inches, eight, ten, about 300 feet from, this maybe is even 400 feet from his house to the fence line of the solar? Yeah, this is 316 feet right here. Yeah, so, so it's 400 about 400 to the, the fence line. I can't picture where this is on Old Westminster Road. I can. It's, it's just got a for sale with sign on it. Oh, it doesn't have that. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't know the area quite well enough. The neighbor, to direct the neighbor just west of an old, uh, almost like a decorative tractor parked out really close to the road, the roadway, yeah. and then that for sale sign. And you're not very far there. from the town line. Um, right, it's not too. The town line <coughs> is. Oh, I so it's that, right that up side to the of the corner of that right there. I think that's the town line. Yeah, I think you're right about that. The town and line. Streeter Road is off to the left. Down. Yeah, down, down to the yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Quite a ways down. Yeah. I, I, I know where it is. Okay, yeah, another, another, oh. I don't know. My Ron Burton my Training line. Village yeah. is just toward those pits over there. Uh, oh, the gravel pits? I don't think so. Not sure. It's 
just <laughs> no. <laughs> no, just what's the laugh? <laughs> well, because they're not supposed to be gravel pits. Oh, okay. They're not. They're not licensed. They're not. The <laughs> Got it. Yeah, I'm not sure. What they <laughs> if they are permitted, the yeah, you don't want to say they are. Training <laughs> not been over there. The training area is up behind Wade Pond on Northern yeah, Road. Yeah, that's further. That's Wade okay. Pond is pretty far over. Yeah. Yeah. This uh, there's an unusually shaped building right down at your map line, right there. That's quite a landmark, and if you drive down, you'll see this building. It looks out of scale a little bit for the neighborhood. It's, it's a huge big. building, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. 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 And that's a road right behind, beside it. That's yeah. Ron Burns' right house. It takes, in the it takes it up to the back, yeah. Mm -hmm. For those pits. Okay. Yeah, so this is, it's a 1.35 megawatt site, or system. We had, we had heard that the Mass state. Electric, or National Grid, said that the, the road that's couldn't support the right. power. In this case? Yeah. We've made an interconnection application. Uh, yeah, we're, we're moving that. along. It's an impact study. Um, the, the indicators we have at this point, are, we're feeling good about this. Um, you never really know until you get further down this road, of course. Mm -hmm. Who knows what, what might lay out there. But um, I think maybe some of the additional projects in the area have, have maybe, you know, upgrades that have occurred have, have maybe changed how things were um, prior to now. Excuse me, what is your name? Sure, it's Josh Farkas. Josh Farkas. I'm a project developer. Did we one. meet you when we walked the site? Or was that somebody else? That was his brother, That's Zach. That's his brother, Zach. <laughs> no. Huh? Zach, well, Zach might have been there. Oh, there's also Ned, a third person. Ned Cheney, our project manager, yeah, was, was there okay. for that walk. So Josh. it was probably Ned. Yeah, this is quite a bit smaller than, than the Wiggensville Road project that we've been talking to you about. Yeah, yeah. one point three five. It's about a fifth of the size. What's the this. acres inside the fence? It's um two and a it's yeah, it's oh, it's I think about that. two point six, but I don't know. It's it's in our paperwork okay. and I just don't recall. And flip that over again and, and hold it up the way that you normally do. All right. If I was owner of this house and I looked out my back window mm. I'm looking up a hill yes so what am I gonna see do you have a well does your model let you will put your eyeball we there can certainly prepare some stuff for you but it's quite a rise and I don't think there's gonna be any visibility of, of anything at the, at the top of this place. it'll be over the it'll crest over so the to crest. speak mm -hmm. yeah it'll be over the crest of the hill it flattens out up here on the top where where we started this. So you go up the hill and then it flattens out. So, so we'll the, be back the panels from, fall back away from, from the top the of the slope. Yeah, a bit. So, and you know, if, if when we look into it a little further, as we're having our discussions with you in the public hearings, we can, we can look at that a little more closely. Do you have a 3D model? You guys we haven't done one yet, oh. but we certainly mm -hmm. can. We can do some sight line exhibits, um, cutting, you know, a, a cross section through there. Just to see what the sight line would be and make sure that that's a visual ripoff. So I heard three Thanks. neighbors. This this one? There's one here. That one over near your shirt button? Yeah, there's one just off and to the north up here. To and the there's north. one up here. Okay. Does the road bend around or does that neighbor have a line, long driveway? Um, yeah. I'm, I'm not, not sure where they're They come in from Westminster? No, they come all come off the same road. I think it might wind all the way down through here. Right. I, I don't you think there's any other nearby street. Oh, that's one of the common driveways which should not be in I don't think so. I think it's right here. Yeah, it looks like there's something coming out of that. Either right there or right here. Oh, this, yeah. I think this, this one is comes this in one here. This one comes goes there. there. And this one, this comes one here. goes there. And they're going up onto a, onto a crest. Not mm -hmm. a big rise, but this is probably the steepest lot because it gets flatter as you go down mm -hmm. here. But these are pretty long driveways. Yeah, they're definitely pretty long. What's the scale? Thousand, yeah, thousand these are feet. 450, feet. 500 foot driveways. Yeah. So I'm you can I'm see that his backyard is pretty, yeah. 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 pretty much up to our property. I'm just shocked because we were led to believe that this, there was no, old no way this project yeah. could go forward because down of power on the line. Old Westminster. Westminster. I don't get yes. into that too much. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> the project oh, developers or our, our interconnection yeah. group would be pursuing uh, that. Ultimately, it comes out. So the it's, it's a matter of okay. what substation it goes to and mm -hmm. what the loads are. So. Well, okay. Let's uh, 
let's get going on this tariff. Okay, okay. one, one question be, before we move on. Um, I think that for the notices, for the new hearing, what I need to do is provide posted envelopes to Patty to do Correct. the mailing? Yep. Okay, I'll, I'll get those. But I can't those. accept the application this evening. Okay. The only thing that we can't exempt, you know, when we, when we get applications, we're fairly um, lenient with everything, you know, working it out, but there's no signature of the tax collector on this. And we can't overlook that. That's that's an absolute. Okay. Um, so you got to get the signature that there are no taxes due. Yeah, J Joyce already did that before. She took Joyce it can't do that. It's got to be done She's by the treasurer. Yeah. Okay. So we'll we'll get it checked out. Um, I mean, the other ones that we've submitted, it's always gotten done really after it came in the door, before we get to public hearing. Mm. I've never accepted one. I mean, I okay. Okay. Well, we'll get it done. Sig, sig, you, you'd be surprised that you probably didn't notice it, but that's the first thing people do is take it to the to the okay. tax collector for a signature of, of no taxes due. I mean, if there's no debt owed, it's not a problem. But okay. I'm hesitant to accept it because of that. Okay. You know. Are you willing to to take it tonight and let me follow up with that so that we can get advertised and get on the the schedule for next month? Uh, no. No? Yeah, it's not a complete application. I can't, we can't sign it as an application if it's not complete. That's what, it, that's what this submission is, and that's where our signatures go in, right? Okay. All right. Um, if you brought it to the tax collector tomorrow and, and left it over in the office, would you go by and sign it one at a time or something? There still would need to be advertised for a couple of weeks yet. Well, let me check. I mean, it's four weeks till the next meeting. So. Yeah, but you see this? This is, this is where we get into the technicalities we've run into before, and this is why I'm holding it up on the site plan submission, because there's a formula, and it has to be submitted at a meeting. I'm sure of that. Okay, so I'm going to assume that A through F is in here, which includes the uh, environmental community, community impact statement, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But it says the plan shall not be deemed to have been submitted until the application form, site plan, and fee herein required have been delivered to the planning board at a regular or special meeting. Receipt will be acknowledged by signature of the majority of the planning board on each copy of the application two of which will be returned to the applicant. So we need, I believe, six of those. Um, so that's the, that's the glitch, is that we just, you know, we need to sign it at a meeting. Okay. And uh, the, the only exception we've never given has been with the tax situation. You know, that okay, uh, a lot of towns have a similar, a similar kind of requirement. Mm -hmm. Just to, they always check to make sure that the taxes are all paid, that in most jurisdictions it happens after the application has been submitted right. in the prior year. Yeah, so in, this, in this case, it's right on the application. That's, you know, the one part of the application that has to be signed by the tax collector, and none of us have any information thereof. So, mm -hmm. so I think we're, you know, going to hold to that just, just because. I mean, this is this is obviously going to be a um, a process, but I want to make sure it gets off on the right foot because this is going to be scrutinized and highly.
why you started this one. So. Okay, well, if you can't do it until the next meeting, I might as well hold that Take until, until yeah. that's signed. Sorry. sorry for I'm that. sorry. You know, I, that's I okay. wish that, you know, that's the one thing that we've never been able to uh, say, ah, no big deal, because, you know, it, it's that, mm -hmm. you know, signature that we need for that one. And, uh, okay, well. We, we do nothing without with that. We've never, right. We don't in even case, do A&Is without In it. cases where there is something that's due, in some cases we pay it to make sure that it's current, and in other cases we work with the owner to make sure that it's sure. paid before yeah. we get into the public hearing process. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm not suggesting that they haven't been paid. It's just we just need authorization on it, that's all. Okay. So. All right. All right. So, sorry about that. I'm going to be a stickler about it, but like I said, that's the... Uh, the one point that we just can't okay. overlook in terms of an application. We've never done it, in fact. You know, we, even with the A&Rs that come in, if they don't have the tax collectors, we don't even review them. You know, it's just the way that goes. Yeah. So what do you think? Should we get going on the hearing? Shall we do that? Yeah. I mean, that, we should. that introduction was... <laughs> I mean, does it have to be at a monthly meeting? Or be it either the special or regular scheduled meeting of the planning board. And I don't I don't anticipate any another meeting this month. So that's your call. Yeah. Nevertheless, so be it. Okay, okay so I'll entertain a motion to recess the planning board hearing in order to continue the public hearing for the Borrego Solar at one forty seven Williamsville Road. So second. Move. All in favor? Opposed? Great. All right, let's uh, continue this hearing. We're in session now for 147 Williamsville Road. Primarily, we're going to be looking at the redesign of the drawing for the, the driveway. Uh, I got a note from Bill Murray just for the record that <coughs> nothing else has been submitted, so he has no comments on anything. And right. We'll pretty much stick to whatever you want to take us, you know, add anything you would like to the hearing. Uh, of course, but this is, I guess, the, the focus for this evening. So Right. We want to be certain that the board is comfortable with what we're offering. Right. Um, Zach had meetings with the owner to try and work this the situation out. It's pretty much as close as possible to what you described at the previous hearing, mm -hmm. Ben. Uh, what we're doing is setting back about 30 feet from the right. roadway uh, so that we have room. We're, we're showing one pole for a riser pole, which may or may not be required. Um, if we can get around it with the utility, we'll go underground from the existing poles at Williamsville Road. But we wanna be you know, upfront that, that there may be a, an additional pole required there to uh, bring the overhead and then go underground from there. Um, we're proposing pad mounted Do equipment. No, no, it's uh, we're proposing pad mounted equipment rather than equipment uh, on poles, so that it's you know on the ground level and we can buffer it from the owner's property that's south of there. Why why wouldn't you use that all the time? I was just surprised. It's I didn't know you it's much more expensive. Oh, so it's an additional cost. So we're going to be paying the additional money okay. necessary to do pad mounted equipment. Uh, the overhead is much, much cheaper to install. Than the information. When you say a fence, what kind of fence? It's like a well, stockade type fence? We can come to whatever agreement. Uh, we've used <coughs> solid fences in some cases. Uh, we've used chain link. With it being situated in, in the woods like it is, probably chain link is, is fine just for security reasons but we can use whatever material is acceptable to the board for that. Okay. What's an existing pole, no wires? There is a, a shorter pole that must have been there for the residential service at some point, mm -hmm. but the residential service comes down the, the pole at Williamsville Road and goes underground the whole way back. So, so there's no longer any facilities on that. There's that no pole. wires today. There is no wires okay. on it. And it's too short for us to use, so uh, we have to be reusing it or just bring it as is or get taken down because it's not in use. 
seems to solve the problem. So it's uh, it should be well shielded from the roadway. There will only be the one pole to turn and come down the new driveway. Uh, it minimizes the amount of clearing that we'll have to do there. I don't think there are any large trees right there on the west side of the existing driveway. They're they're mostly smaller and brushy. We'll have to clear for the overhead line a bit right there, but uh, we won't affect any of the stone wall that's out along Reedsville Road. We will have to take out a portion of it that's further down the driveway where the new connection will come through, mm -hmm. but we won't have to remove any stone wall along Reedsville Road no trees. any longer, and probably no trees over the, over the requirement, so we may not even need that scenic road. Can we just call the pole out on Lunasville Road, pole A, mm -hmm. and we'll call the one 30 feet in, pole B. Okay. So we can talk to each other. <laughs> All right. Um, if I understand it correctly, today, pole A provides the energy for the house. <coughs> it does. And, yes. and power comes down that pole and there, goes underground yes. approximately next to this, between the road and the, and the, the stone rock wall, wall I think. Yes. I believe that's correct. Um, so what you're proposing is don't come down that pole. Stay up. Mm -hmm. I should say it like a question, but I can't figure yes. that out. <laughs> uh, I think what you're doing is, is going from pole A to pole B in the air, and then pole B to what? It will come, it'll come down that pole. It'll be a riser pole, come down the pole and go underground from so there. So that'll be underground. So it will only be that short extension of overhead. And the only reason that we're thinking that the utility is going to require that is because the residential service already comes down that but they're existing being separate pole. conduits. Uh, sometimes they'll allow that, sometimes they won't. So we're just not assuming that they're just going to rubber stamp that. Right. Um, sometimes they require an additional pole so that they don't have multiple conduits coming down a single pole. So My it's, it's going to be up to them in the long run. Where, where I was going was when you said to Tom, you said this is above ground. One of the factors was it was caulked. In but this case, it, it's not really caulked. Yeah, that I didn't pole. think so. <laughs> it's it's the, the series of poles with the equipment mounted uh, versus the pad mounted equipment. Yeah, because the cross would only yes. be 30 feet of trench. Right, it's not, it's not a big cross sink differential in this case. It's just a simple riser. Right, you could see our, I don't our I, not our, but maybe my preference for trenching it if you can. That you that would be our preference as well. We just didn't want to propose something that we we don't have a final approval from okay. the utility on. If that. you can get the final approval, might you go? That's that what way? we're pursuing. Yes. Okay. We would we would pursue to get rid of that single pole. Yeah, it's, a, it's just a, something somebody's going to hit. You got you got the logging truck, you got your, your own truck. Mm -hmm. It wasn't there. It'd be a lot nicer, <laughs> and nicer looking, and also no. I would the pole, pole wouldn't be put in until after you. It would be at the at the, the end, end of the project anyway. Yeah. Normally, yeah, and that would be installed by the utility. Oh. So it's it's not one that we would install. The the first they part of the, the interconnection one. poles are are utility owned equipment. So they come in and install those poles themselves. But the logging operations goes on for a long time if I understand it. Oh, the new the new logging. The back logging. Yeah. The one from DCR. Yeah. So That's they gonna be there a while. But they're not gonna be turning they're gonna be coming in going straight. They'll go straight. They're back, not gonna be yeah. turning and going down their road. Yeah, well yeah. they're gonna go wherever they go. I, I, think, yeah. big enough. I think the way that this is laid out, the I geometry is is fairly good. The, the delivery trucks for us would be coming from town side, mm -hmm. and it, it'll be a fairly easy transition to come down in, into that driveway. Um, what about the sight lines for the? They there still would be uh, a significant amount of existing vegetation between the driveway and Reedsville Road, so there'll be probably be very little, um, mm -hmm. very little visual of the driveway itself. And the owner gave her okay for all of this. She, she's Zach happy. met with the owners and they okayed it. So um, we had their agreement before we put this plan together to, to send it to Tom. Mm -hmm. uh, he had said he wanted to take a walk out there and take a look at the yeah, I did. situation. Yeah, I did. So, but before we finalize things, we just wanted to make sure that you were all comfortable and 
that that there weren't going to be further revisions to what was quiet. Um, what's the distance from the corner of the fence to the road? I don't see a scale on this thing, so um, I'm having trouble. It is about a 30 scale. Let me see if I have one. In fact, it is a 30 scale. Well, I don't need it to the foot, but is it? Is it well, 10, look at this, Tom. Is oh, okay, yeah. There's that's 30, 30 feet. feet, so. Yep. Yeah, there's a 30 feet yeah. dimension on here. Yeah, so that's so 30, 60 at least. 60, almost 90 feet. All right. I do have a and scale. And this wetland also gets some more wetland, doesn't it? It's, yeah, we're not encroaching on that. This but was it gets bumped out because you're replacing No, that's the there. that's the next one down. Oh, this okay. is a new one that we found after the walk with Bill. Okay. Uh, it's considered isolated, so there's no buffer. <coughs> the bigger one is a little further down. Okay, it's, no it's problem. back here. <coughs> and then there will be the mitigation area adjacent to that. What's this thing? That is just a... A construction wash okay. basin, so that uh, there's an area for them to wash off truck tires, so they don't track out onto the road. So what's that, that dimension? That is not quite 50 feet out to the road mm -hmm. right of way, and it's about 50 feet to the edge of the pavement, back to the fence. And nothing will be removed in there. No, there shouldn't be any <coughs> anything removed beyond the the clearing line that we have around the yeah. fence. So. And <coughs> we haven't shown anything on the plans yet. Zach's still in discussions with the property owner. There's going to be some buffering around around that fence as well. So we just haven't come Buff to an agreement. Buffering? Landscape buffering. Oh, okay. So there'll be some landscape plantings in that area that Sean has cleared for us as well. That's so almost 100 feet down the road, right? <coughs> it's, yeah, yeah it's, that's it certainly yeah. is. Yeah. On the edge of the driveway. Oops, the wrong scale. Yeah, it's 90, over 90 feet to the fence line. And there would be some water seep area that could slide back, back and forth. So. And how tall is all this stuff inside the fence? Um, most of the equipment enclosures are, you know, Head height or less. Most of them are four feet or less. The the stuff, the boxes. The, the boxes that yeah. the equipment is like housed in. Yeah, they're nothing they're sticks in up weather, the Yeah, weather rated yeah. Uh, cabinets. Yeah. So uh, six feet is generally the the tallest for like a switch gear. I don't know exactly what they'll have to install there for the utilities, but they're between four and six feet tall. Well, the, there'll be a light. I've, I've seen these before. They have a, do they have a light? Is that only for emergency uses? Um, yeah, the only lighting that we ever propose at any of the equipment areas is motion activated. It's usually okay. a single light for, you know, just for safety reasons. But the the system's not in operation after dark, so there's really not much occasion to be there for maintenance reasons after yeah, okay. after the sun has gone down. But it's not going to be a light on. The no, and it would be directed away from the roadway shielded and yeah. directed down towards the ground so that it just illuminates the the near vicinity of where the equipment it, is. If it's on. If it's it, on. It's not. And it won't be on. It's not like yeah. on 24 hours no, a day. No, it's motion activated. It's off so. all other times. And this is the property line? Yes. The property line is just on the east side of the driveway. Well, I think it's a big improvement over where we started. So. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Uh, much more comfortable looking than right. Well, I'm you sure. guys made it apparent that that an additional curb cut wasn't really going to work for you. So, I guess that the owners they were very adamantly against it at first. So, staff really worked hard to get their agreement on this. I think they'll love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the the whole neighborhood is enhanced by it doing going there you know quite frankly you know be minimal intrusion mm -hmm. uh, mr kern is not going to see the, the site that he the, was concerned about the and visibility yeah, from his yeah. and everything is yeah. everything should look come out better no one will even know it's there mm. that's good right once it's in and things are yeah. you know returned to a normal state it won't be very apparent at all and their date is tucked in 
You don't have date tampering and people driving right. in without you knowing. Right. Yeah. It and all that We're stuff. proposing a single yeah, barrier that. gate there, so that people aren't driving down to yeah. just the, the secondary drive there. I think it'll work out well. Good. Okay. Well, I'm very close then, so I'll probably be sending plans and the final calculations on your stormwater bill within the next week. So there'll be plenty of time for them to review, get back to us if there's any tweaking, and be ready to finalize plans at your next meeting. Okay. Well, that'd be great. So I'll entertain a motion to continue hearing until January. January 3, January 3rd, 7 p.m. Good for you guys again? Motion for us. All right. Motion to continue the hearing until January 3rd, 7 p.m. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I'll entertain a motion <coughs> to uh, close the public hearing. And I'm sorry, not close the public hearing, but to reconvene. reconvene the planning board meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? All All right. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate thank it. You. I am yeah. sorry about that other staff pool, but, you know, I think it's, I'm it's one of those things. Um, they probably just got overlooked on the other applications that we made previously. Yeah. Well, I don't remember there being even a lot of discussion when we submitted Williamsville Road. I think I handled the package to Joyce, who was in attendance at that meeting, and probably just went from there. And I think she even helped us get get the uh, the assessor's sign off because that block was the one that's on the front page. So, but um, we'll get it right away and get everything back back in time. All right, great. Thank Did you leave me a set of drawings? Or? No, it didn't mean anything. Oh, they won't mean anything. Yeah. We're not taking anything. I can leave you with one if you wanted to see what we have proposed on. No, that's fine. No? Okay. Let's, let's not. We just bring it all back in and see what everyone has to say. We're trying to, okay. we're trying to use the KISS method this evening. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank have a good you. holiday, Thank gentlemen. You. Yeah, you too. You too. <coughs> see you in January. Technically on the holiday. Have, yeah, have good holidays and safe holidays. Yeah, absolutely. At least it's not 9.30. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of an early night. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks, guys. All, All right, right. We'll see you for the year. Take it Thank easy. You. Take care. Bye -bye. All right. Oh. <sighs> Moving on. Go ahead, Tom. Discuss. We got the <laughs> Cheech and Chun bylaw here. We might as well get this thing going. We need to. We need to get working on this. Tom's got some ideas, and this is basically from here on in a planning session for what we're going to be doing. We don't have a lot of decisions to make tonight, so uh, hopefully we can get some ideas on the table, some dates on the table, and get. This marijuana bylaw underway. We also need to do more um, earth room re removal permit enforcement. You know. This Go is ahead, John. Tom. This is really a like a to do list for next year. Exactly. Like, I like that. A to do list. To do list for next year. You, you just because a lot of these things get left you left behind because of other things that come back. So I I, rec I think we should try to keep this stuff on the agenda every week, every month rather. Just so we, even if we don't have any action, we'll just continue it on, so it continues. The marijuana zoning issue is going to hit us soon. We have a um, a moratorium on on any new 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 uh, places to sell marijuana in town until July first. Okay, so we really want to have something in place to replace that moratorium. Or if we want to extend the moratorium, I, I don't. I guess it's up to the people of the town. Um, so we have to make some decisions about it here. The way it sits right now, uh, if we didn't have the moratorium, and someone wanted to come in and, and 
to a growing facility or a sales facility for mar medical marijuana or recreational marijuana, they could come into the town um, and do sell it. They could they could locate it anywhere they wanted as long as it complied with the state regulations. So, and the state regulations are still being drawn up. So we have no idea what the state regulations are going to be until they said April 15th, I believe. So April 15th, they're going to have the regulations, and the moratoriums are good till July 1st. But if we wait till the regulations come out and then start writing zoning laws, um, there's not going to be enough time to get it done before the annual town meeting. <coughs> that, that sounds about right? That's well, yeah, it's going to get complicated. So just to give you an idea of what we need to plan for, and you know, just to start discussing and thinking about this, we may not even ha have all of the ins and outs that we need to do. But first of all, we need to figure out a location where we want to put these types of facilities, if we allow them. And we should. You know, it's, I'm not saying we're not going to. I'm just saying that's what we need to decide as well. Uh, there has to be some kind of proposal for taxing these facilities, hours of operation, days of operation, um, as I said, location. See, we, we, we need, we need a, a comprehensive site plan, we need parking, we need um, signage. You know, things like this sometimes get overlooked, but this is gonna be probably, and you know, put it in perspective, is likely going to be a facility in Gardner. We may never have a facility here in Hubbardston at all, okay? However, that's not what we're, we're here for to predict whether we're gonna have one, but we are gonna have to prepare for it in case it comes to fruition. So I'm gonna suggest that starting in January, and we can do this at the next meeting, is that we start working uh, on a weekly basis, not only this one, but there's gonna be a couple others we have to look at, and do working meetings. I think you're the only one that would probably be unable to attend them because it's probably easy to do them during the day, you know, for an hour a day, once a week. But unless you wanna do it your know, lunch hour, we can do it on, but well, we have a lot more free time than you. Do. I don't get no hour for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> Oh. What uh, about you? I, I work four days a week. Okay, so we'll work around yeah. that. Okay. But it might, and it could be, you know, in the evening. It, it doesn't have to be during the day. Yep. I'm just trying to make yeah. it convenient for everybody. But, you know, limit it to a working session, one hour. We come in, we bang out what we can bang out, we go on with it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I agree with it. It's, so. uh, it's worked in the past, and quite honestly, I'd rather do it do it during the day. The previous bylaws that we've written in the evenings go on and on and on and really kind of tie up a whole another evening that we don't, any of us want to give up. So that's, you know, yeah. and, and it, even if you couldn't make the meeting to work with it, you'd have, you know, copies and review and anything you wanted to bring in for ideas would be considered and discussed. So, uh, <coughs> and no decisions would be made, understand? That would be a working meeting. Mm -hmm. So you know, we come up with the ideas, bring them back to the to the group. Yeah, we won't vote on anything right. at no. one of those right. meetings. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So great. Um, anything so, else you wanted on that? Well, we just to really start thinking about it. I, I've been working with Montecito Regional Planning. They're supposed to be coming up with some some draft uh, plans for regulations or zoning that we can use. Certainly, several towns had them out, we can look at that. I guess you've done in the past, you've kind of yeah. searched the internet. Yeah, we've we've stolen, not stolen, but we've Followed. copied other towns' bylaws. We've had, we will probably get a model bylaw from KP Law. They've been very generous in the past. Yeah. They develop something after they do the same thing we pretty much do. So we put it all together and sort through it. Maybe you could uh, email KP Law and ask them if they have anything right now. So. Yep. When we have the first meeting, we could have something to start with. But the questions to the town is, does the town want to have any of these facilities? Now, since Hubbardston voted for the, mar uh, the marijuana law, yeah. the way, if, if the town wanted to not allow it, they can do that. 
but it would have to be a vote at the town meeting and it would have to be a vote at the ballot box to stop that. Now what, all right, let me ask you this. You may not know the answer because it's so new. What if the, the bylaw is defeated at town meeting? Does that mean the town is not allowing it? No, that means it's allowed and can do go anywhere in the town it wants. Oh. If, if, it's, if, it's, if we have a bylaw, we write the bylaw, and the people vote the bylaw down, then they can... Wide open. Wide open. They can put this anywhere that the regulations would allow it. So I would assume, and I know... Well, state regulations. State regulations. And I would assume that it can't be within so many feet of a school or a playground mm -hmm. in the regulations. I just Like a liquor bar. Like a, yeah, same sort of thing. So it can't be there, but if you want to put it on on uh, on your road, across the street, come out of your someone's back door or something, they might be able to. And another facet of this is also, and I don't have an answer for it, uh, but I think we have to look into seeing whether or not, I guess they call them um, marijuana cafes, or but yep. you know, so that they can be used on premises. They can use it on premises, and they can be combined with alcohol establishments or not. These the regulations are supposed to be addressing all this stuff. You know whether or not you can buy it and you know, smoke or take it there, or you have to leave it home. I don't. No, no one knows what the regulations are. They just approved some more money in the legislature for this committee that they've been working on. But they said they, the governor, I think, has said that they want. To have the regulations in place by April fifteenth. Well, they better get them done, yeah. Otherwise, they're going to have to pass another extension or something. So the way it sits right now, we have a moratorium until July first, so no one can really apply for anything until after July first. Or the regulations are published, I think it says, on a on a bylaw. So if you see anything in the paper, read up on it. You, yeah. You're going to see. I've seen a couple of places that have. Uh, reporting on bylaws that have already been accepted in towns and you know that's what we have to do because it's we're not going to reinvent the wheel but we're going to apply what we know to Huggerston. So. Mm -hmm. right it gets complicated believe me these, okay. these. and then of course whatever we write goes to town meeting then gets reviewed by the ag so right and then she was at this meeting the attorney general who would approve it was at this meeting i went with with uh, brian bullock was there as well and they don't have, I mean, she kept saying we don't have a lot of the answers. And a lot of these questions that people are asking, she said we don't know the courts are going to have to decide. So, uh, but it is coming, so we have to at least really, I think we should. We well, what, what we have to primarily concentrate on is mm -hmm. the desires and the effects in Hubbardston. Right. You know, everybody else we can't worry about, but that's all we do. Right. All right. So the, the next item here is a solo bylaw review. Uh, when we were talking to the people that had the uh, uh, petition at the last special town meeting, we told them that we would review the bylaws for the solo, the solo bylaws in January. So I think that we need to start looking at, into that as well. And to, uh, I, I've been, I've had, I have some ideas about this and some I've written up a few things on it, so it may be at the next meeting. If we're going to have the working meetings, we should probably include this one. Separate. Uh, separate. Do you have a separate working meeting for this? Yeah, I would say we probably, we might not need, need more than one or two for this one. Yeah. Because we've already got the bylaw, we're just going to tweak it. Right. And, you know, we've got some salient uh, parts of what we already right. have that people have objected to that we've already we know what the concern yeah. is. Yeah. So we, yeah. we need to just check it out. So we can okay. do that too. So right. I'll write something up my ideas on that and bring it to our first meeting date. Yep. Just so, whatever you, you have whatever you've taken away from the hearings that we had on it and whatever other ideas you may want to bring in, that's what we'll look at. Right. Okay. I haven't quite figured it out yet, but one of the um, petition statements or, or impact statements of these solar systems was that there's a house and there's a whole solar system next to it that they can see. Um, I, I have to look at the, the property situation, but it appears to me that the house that the 
it's claimed that they suffered financially. They couldn't sell it. Uh, at one time, owned the land that the solar system was on. And they cut it off and built the solar system. And so it's, uh, it's a little unusual that it would be a claim that there was a big financial impact from something they did themselves. But well, well I got to check it out. Part of their argument. Yeah, I got to so check it out yeah. completely. Yeah, but whether, whether or not you know we run a fact yeah. check it or not. I yeah, guess. but well, that that's going to happen again, though. You know, someone's going to buy a big piece parcel, and well, yeah. it's going to happen at Wings Road Road. Um, you know, it's that has a house on it and a parcel. Yeah. That well, I think we uh, we told the people we were going to do it. And yeah, we, really we have to redo and we it. We should. But we don't. I mean, even if we said we're not going to change it, we really need to have a thorough review of. of uh, I mean, I think some changes need to be made. Yeah. Okay, you ha the next item is the uh, Attorney General. Do we hear any update Nothing on that? Yet. They, they take Nothing sometimes yet. two or three months. We haven't heard anything yet. Okay. That would be the articles that were approved at the special town meeting in October, right? Right. So Remind me, what they worked with zoning? Well, we had two or three zoning. Oh, that's we had right. a general, yep. and then we had the, um, the petition for the solar yeah. farm, and they review everything. Yeah. Right. The whole meeting review. Um, the earth removal permit enforcement and the goals for next year, what do we want to do with that? This is just something to start thinking about because springtime's coming and we really, we have to, we've, we've made a lot of progress on these things and yeah. I think we need to really continue that progress but the Attorney General's review is paramount to that, so we really can't do anything until, would you say that? Until well, we no. What, what the law says is that when you pass a bylaw at town meeting, that is in effect, and the only time it is not going to be in effect if it is, in fact, disallowed by the Attorney General. So we can proceed with the assumption that it's okay, and that's how everybody does it. So okay. if they come in and, and say, no, no, there's a r something wrong, well, we're not wrong by assuming it's okay. It's just one of those things. Um, so we can, we can do this whether or not they approve it in a timely fashion or not. And it's, and it's a good thing to do, but I think we just need to uh, take what we've done and continue with the, the plan that we had. I thought we had a pretty good plan. We mm -hmm. still have a couple of loose ends that we need to right. solve. Well, one of the and, uh, yeah, the big the two big ones is the Marinellis and the um, the W J Graves across the street. You mean big areas? Big areas. Yeah. yeah. But the active ones are Brown came in with a preliminary, and Kataisko has spoken of yeah. it. Yeah. So, so I'll be starting to do my report again on the gravel pits. The whole and because we need that for April, right? And we had a ranch. Yeah. And we had a ranch. That one's a loose end that we need now to, right. to solve that one too. What's the other one? Well, that was the one that they hired an attorney to. Oh, yeah, but question. it's not a solar. It's not a solar issue. No, it's not a solar. It's a, we're on, still on gravel removal. So uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll, after my for the February meeting, I'll bring in my the report, you know, draft report, and we can go go from there. Because January is going to be packed with these other stuff. Okay. So we'll, we'll we'll address that uh, earth removal. Well, you, had a, you had a great plan last year. I yeah. think it's just we. No, well, I'll we update it. Pick yeah. it up and do the same list. Yeah, it's a update the list. That was a long, arduous, enjoyable <coughs> kind of discussion on the Marinellis, but you know, <coughs> we'll go from there. Might might have another one. If it only takes yeah. one a year, that's what. You know, some of these things take a lot of time. So, anyways, we'll 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 put that. Uh, I'll put that in for February. I'll update the plan and draft, and then we can kind of look at that, and then we can go to selectmen. Did, didn't we, this was a comment, didn't we send the, the, um, right at a ranch wording and whatnot off to our lawyer, to, to the town lawyer? In fact, we did. And we asked them to engage the conversation with the, the Rietta Ranch's attorney, and nothing transpired. That's where it ended. That's where I was trying to find out where the end of the thread was. Yeah. <laughs> and now it, it becomes a different type of conversation because we've changed the bylaw. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we'll let them figure that out. <coughs> right. 
Uh, the Affordable Housing Committee, um, we need to have a meeting with that sometime soon. We have this $5,000 for the CPA fund. We have to spend that money by July 1st or we lose it, it goes back to CPA. Um, or we, I think we can ask for an extension. So we've not really done anything. We've been. Oh, we have 50,000. Oh, 50,000. Sorry, I'm sorry. 50,000. Yep. 50, um, so we have to get that committee up and working again. Yeah, that and that has been one of the <coughs> fatalities of this year. For you guys, because you weren't here when we were running the, the Affordable Housing Committee, it became a subcommittee of our committee composed of all of us and some volunteers. Dennis O'Donnell was on it, my daughter Catherine was on it. Um, Chairman of the ZBA was on it. Well, CPA, I think, had a rep on it. Yep. It was nine or ten and eleven people. We had money that was dedicated to affordable housing because Madison Green bought their covenants out from us. We sold them their rights to ignore the affordable housing covenant that they had. And we had $15,000, which we still have funds left over, dedicate for this affordable housing. The objective is to increase the amount of affordable housing in the town. We have to meet a 10% uh, quota. We're 2.5% to 3.5% in that area of the 10%, so we've got a long way to go. We've got a couple of possibilities, and we'll just move forward again and get it going. We've been kind of sidetracked this past year, but well, we probably need to go to, idea. go to the selectmen and ask them to reappoint. We have to have. Yes, we I have know. To I think we all have to be re reappointed. Yes, correct. Yep. So, so if you know anybody who's interested, so in serving on it, that'd be great. So I'll, I'll contact uh, the selectmen or Brian Bullock and ask them to reappoint all the members of us. And we, yeah, reappoint us and. We'll put out maybe a note on the on the uh, Web website page. for volunteers. Since I think we're all out of, it's only a one year appointment. That's right. It it has expires at the, at the end, end of, of the fiscal, fiscal, year. fiscal year. So we need to get that would up and we, running. Would we petition all the old members of the C? Yeah, we yeah. yeah. want to yeah. mm -hmm. be back on it. Yep. Absolutely. Or better yet, not ask them. Just tell them <laughs> they're on it. Well, they have to sign. They have to swear. <laughs> yeah. So if they're appointed by the selectmen, which they would be, we have to go to see Joyce again and get re-sworn in for the affordable housing committee. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. The update on the master plan. John Hume couldn't make it tonight. Um, what he did ask us to do at the last meeting was to read the, the final draft. Plan and uh, make any comments to him, so we can include those comments in to his what he what he's doing the final document. He and we and we were going to have a meeting uh, with uh, with him and uh, Captain Mark. The we're going to invite them. We we'll invite them yeah. and the selectmen to a meeting. Okay, we so want to do that in January. Uh, select board. So let's do this. Let's uh, invite John back for January at 6 o'clock if he can come in. And that should be the final working revision. Then it will go to final report. Right. So if you have a chance, look over the drafts that he's given us, come up with some comments. We'll work it out the details in January, and we'll have a presentation in February of the final report to us, and we'll invite the select board and the economic development committee and go from there. Well, why don't we invite this like board and economic to the January meeting so if they have any comments. Well, you could do that too. Yeah. Does the economic development committee still exist? It hasn't been disbanded. Okay. And, so. and uh, John, I thought John was going to make a couple more revisions and issue it. Well, that's, I'll ask John and to. And from the November meeting till now, I haven't seen his issuance. 
Well, Has it come out and I missed it? No, no, he's been waiting for us to give him comments. He's waiting, okay. waiting for us to give him comments. We gave him some comments that night, but I was well, we, we waiting have, for some more. Okay. We had planned to have him here this evening to get yeah. comments from us this evening. So, yeah. so I was waiting for the red. I guess I won't. No. Did he, um, did he handle anything last week? Like another version? Oh, yeah, oh, you no, weren't here last week. Uh, last meeting, last yes. Last month, yeah. Yep. He did another draft. It was a paper, paper version. It's this one, isn't it? Uh, what's the date? November 1st? Yeah. Yeah. Can you wait to just run the copy off after? Yeah. 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 Uh, boo, 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 Ron Hume. Uh, uh, the existing solar pit permits. Ron's been working on that. Um, update on the bankruptcy of one of the solar permits. I did... Contact. I did get the information from Di uh, uh, Diane Peterson of the new owner, and I talked to someone there today who gave me the name of the person who's in charge of it, which I left it wrong. Um, and you're going to talk to him? I'm going to talk to him and just see where we are. His, I did look up his permit, the ones that, and they do require. Uh, that they give us a yearly report. Right. In so the permit? Yes. Yep. Oh, I keep reading it and I can't find it. It's in the it's in yeah, it's a nine point one. And they have to notify us of the, the change in ownership and we have to update our financials on them to make sure we have the correct amount Tom, of money. Tom's gonna go get financials. Is, is the the statement of an annual report in the conditions? Yes. Okay. Yeah. You know the one that we yeah, yeah. the conditions. Seven point five. It, yeah, it's right down at the in the it's it's sandwiched in the uh, okay, I'll find one of them. It's in there though. I did find it, yeah. Um, and they're supposed to notify us, you know. And I don't think notifying the um, assessors. assessors is a is a proper way of doing it. They need to either come to a meeting. Or they're from New Jersey. The guy that's running this project is lives in New Jersey. Well, so it's pretty it's pretty simple to to look up the bylaw, read it, and come. Right. I mean, they, 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 there's no excuse. They, yeah. You know, there's nothing in the whole bylaw that talks to the assessors. We don't even mention them. The, the question is, are these these permits, they're they're put onto the uh, registry of deeds. They should be. They it's should up to be. them to file it. Oh, really? Yeah. Any special permit has should go on record. I mean, it's should or must. Well. It's not our job to put them on record. It's the applicants and the recipient of the permit to put it on record. See, and I think it's sometimes you in their best interest. I when mean, you do the ANRs, or when we do the ANRs, I think you do something like, you need to put it into the registry of deeds, and then you need to show us the receipt in order to get a number for the street. Yeah, yeah. they, have, they so have to do, do that. Do we have any kind of mechanism like that? That the way they come back and tell us they really did. No, we don't. But it's, we don't care if they do or not. It's a, to, to their own benefit to do it. Well, except that it's a lot easier to find it when well, it's on the registry. We should deep. have a whole file on everything. Uh, yeah, we should. Uh, you don't know the agony. Well, I know, but then if someone buys the pro if say they don't, they don't, they sell it or they go bankrupt, and the bankruptcy is going through and they don't see any special conditions or anything, they, they. And if someone from the planning board doesn't pick it up, no one ever, it goes away basically. I mean, I think we should we should put it on. We should either they should either pay us to put it on, or we should put it on. Here's an example. We we can pretty easily find the decision, but the decision has a whole bunch of exhibits. It's a lot harder to find the exhibits. It shouldn't be. I don't understand. Why I know it shouldn't be. I correct. agree with you completely. It shouldn't be, but it is. But it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, and maybe some time with you would help. I mean, I don't know my way through those files, but it hasn't well, been easy. Then we just make it part of the conditions. You yeah. have to put it on file. Give us the receipt. I mean, that's, that's what simple I think. As that. I think uh, that's yeah. a good move. Yeah. I, I don't understand why anybody wouldn't do it because it's in their best interest to have it on file in the registry. Well, see, I think they, it's they're not willing to do that if they're not sharp enough requires to shame them. No, I think it's, it's to their best interest not to have it on because if it's not on there, something buy, someone buying it won't know it exists. 
in you know twenty years from now, which is when yeah. these things run out, you know, we'll all be retired from the planning board, maybe, <laughs> and no one will know. Maybe, maybe just retired from it. <laughs> Oh, you're we'll, be buried, we'll be buried right here. <laughs> <laughs> but his grid, his beard will be gray. <laughs> we'll be shaving. Fifty something. Oh, 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 Patio versus relatively new over there. Um, if you know your way around there, if you could give me a little bit of a guided tour, maybe get me rolling in the right direction. All right, I'll be happy to meet you up there. All right. When is beer season over? Let's see. The well, they're going right by your house, right? Uh, you yeah, shouldn't have any trouble. <laughs> <laughs> they're going right by. They're not even stopping. Um. All right, great. Well, we got a good plan for coming up. Anybody got any other? Ideas, anything well, else? Well, Tom's going to give us some idea what he I found. Got a couple. Oh, you do? Wow. Yeah. Well, I've, go got a, for it. I've got a couple more, too. Man. I, I stood way back from this solar stuff. Stop thinking, yeah. What are you, <laughs> running the chainsaw? And I've, been by, I've been by myself for two weeks cutting wood. <laughs> <laughs> That's a kiss of death. <laughs> Keep thinking, Butch. That's what you're he can think at. real good, he just can't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I, I tried to make a little impact statement. Um, financial, just through the financial lens at first, not aesthetics or anything else, but um, there's a uh, permit application fee, then there's all the fees that go along with electrical and mechanical inspection and all that stuff. So money flows from whatever this thing is, a solar project, to the town, to the fees avenue. Then there are pilot agreements which is intended to be a payment in lieu of per, uh, a payment in lieu of taxes for what I'll loosely refer to as everything above the ground, the the posts and the panels and the anchors, but uh, electrical equipment and whatnot. And they pay a fixed amount. No, they don't pay a fixed amount. They pay a an amount every year for 20 years, and it's escalatable. And some of them are escalatable to 2%, some of them are escalatable to 2.5%. Um, but nevertheless, it goes up a little bit with time. Sure. <laughs> and that's, then, then the assessors look at the solar system and they say, well, in addition to the pilot for the personal property, we recognize that the land now has a different use and it's um, converted to an industrial use and now that's industrial use not industrial zoning but it is an industrial use and therefore uh, Diane Peterson. Peterson told me that the acreage under the ground uh, under the panels goes up to about twenty thousand dollars an acre from whatever agricultural residential was or commercial or wherever they located. They, they pay that they they pay that increase in value, plus plus the pilot, pilot yes plus the pilot who yes. pays who pays for that? Well, I don't know who has the actual obligation, but it's yeah. an obligation to the town that indeed gets paid. It could be depending on how the lease agreement is written, the uh, solar guy might be responsible for it, or the landowner might be responsible. So so the so they they pay for a pilot, which is the amount of energy that's produced. That's no, it's for the panels, panels. for the personal property. Okay, so that's um, one tax. Yes. And then the land value goes from, say, like the one up on Williams Road, it goes from 61A land to industrial use land of $20,000 $20, an acre. That's correct. Now, some of these, I think, were $15,000 an acre a couple well, years whatever, ago. Whatever, but it's but not. This, I think Diane told me, like, the current going rate. Right. Because um, I know when I, my 61A land, we need 30 acres, we pay like $40 a year. Yeah, ridiculously cheap. Yeah. Well, you get it abated. I get it abated, yeah. 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 It's not, you know, it's not yeah. given to you. You have to yeah. put it into this. Yeah, you have to prove it. Just yeah. so everybody understands, if, you know, with the viewership out there, that you don't get it. it, it there's there's a formula, and it's an application, and it's regulated, and the there's value. There's restrictions. Yeah, there's restrictions, right. and your value is abated X percent, so right. that you pay less money. But you give something up. Get less money. Yeah, yeah. 
But they so but their land would be valued significantly more. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't know that. And they get that as a, as a real estate tax at that point. Yes, and in fact, the pilot, in the first year that it's paid, Diane told me that it's recognized as uh, new growth. I think that's what it's termed. Right. Um, it's termed new growth. In the second year, it's coming in and it's just recognized as real estate tax. Yeah. Okay. And that's kind of assessor's language, and I'm yeah. not sure I know what I'm saying, but that's well, what she told me. Um, the other thing that Tom just brought up that I'm not clear on is how a solar property moves from Chapter 61 to a solar installation. I remember it came up on the Williamsville Road, and we asked the lawyer a question, and we heard an answer, but I don't remember what the answer was. Well, it, it goes, the transition is the landowner goes to the Board of Assessors, takes the acreage out of the chapter, whatever is 61, 300, mm -hmm. yeah. they take it out of the chapter, they then assess the rollback taxes and a penalty. Okay. At that point, it then becomes the status, it stays the same, it stays the same zoning status, but it then has a different value because they no longer abate the value under Chapter 61, what they're doing is they're, they're charging $10,000 for that parcel. But because you're putting it into chapter, going along with the restrictions the chapter has, you get an abatement of 90% or 75%. If it's forest recreation, management. Recreation, forest management. Right, or an agricultural. So recreation gets an abatement of 75% of the tax to do on forest management gets 90 percent all right but there's there's restrictions and there's rules governing what you can do with that land you have to have a forest management plan the 61 yeah. yeah so now if you are going to change the use from chapter to solar then you are going to have that value reestablished at which point you'll pay the back taxes on what it would have been and a penalty for it, and then it becomes back to its original status. My, my only point was that that penalty and the back taxes is yet another flow of money to us, us to the town. Correct. Then there's um, construction surety, which is money that they put up during the construction process to um, make sure they completed to or to its requirements. Then at the end of construction, the last time Bill was here, he explained that they get that money back. Mm -hmm. Then they put up decommissioning surety, which is defined as what it takes to um, tear this thing down and I guess to some extent reclaim the land. I don't think they reforest it, but they grade it and smooth it out and make it look all right. And that money is put into a trust fund, that's cash, put into the trust fund. And the special permits say there has to be a mechanism to take you from the cost of de demolish, uh, decommissioning it in year one to the cost of what it would cost to decommission it in year 20. And as an example, uh, the Gardner Road projects, they calculated the cost of decommissioning it in year one at some $35,000. And then they escalated that at 2.5% 20 years out and came to a total of like $56,000. And they put $56,000 in the bank. So the mechanism to get from year one to year 20 is built into the amount. I haven't figured out what other guys did, but I do have a list of Who's how the other guys. What do you mean? All the other solar systems. They should have done the same thing. Well, I don't know. They they haven't. The, the mechanism isn't defined in the applicate in the uh, in the permit. Uh, all it says is there will be a mechanism. The mechanism could be, as Bill suspected, um, last time he spoke, he said, "Well, I think they have to contribute something every year 
to make this thing grow, make this fund amount grow with time. And that would be a legitimate way to take you from one to 20. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't done in the, in the instance of Dragon Rose, and I haven't figured out how it was done on the other one. However, uh, I don't think the bylaw says that. I think the bylaw says. Not the bylaw, the, uh, the uh, permit. Well, but the bylaw says the fee would be paid prior to, and the, and the formula to pay the fee is what you're talking about. But I don't think it has in the bylaw uh, progressive payments. It's a payment. Um, you oops, you, say, what the, the you say what the, the escalator is, and then they have to pay the. Full yeah, they come up with the whole. They they calculate the entire <coughs> amount. The twenty-year value. And that's what they're doing. So they say say it's a, say it's a hundred thousand dollars. Every year they're going to increase it by two and a half percent. So when they pay it, they don't pay the hundred thousand. They pay the hundred thousand plus up front, plus the two and a half percent every year. For twenty years. For twenty years. Yeah, so it could be a hundred and fifty thousand. That's what Borrego yeah. did. Yeah, yeah, they moved from thirty-five to the Gardner Road thing moved from thirty-five to fifty-six. And they pay the fifty-six in. Right. Um, I just haven't seen that in in black and white on the on the, on the other ones. On the other ones I'm reading. Well, it's it's but in the zoning bylaw. I, I believe you. Yeah. I'm just apologizing for not having gotten to the bottom of it on all five mm -hmm. systems. Um, the other thing that I got was. Um, so, so on checking all those other systems, you're you're you in the tax the treasurer. Found all the money in the town. Yeah. You know that it exists. I know it exists, and here it is. Um, you know, twenty Pitcherville Road's got one hundred and fifty-three thousand dollars sitting in their decommissioning fund, and uh, ninety-five Williamsville Road has one hundred and three, and ninety-one has forty-five. Thir Gardner Road has the two Gardner Roads together have one hundred and twelve or something. Right. So they're pretty big numbers. They seem like they're big enough to. Uh, Cover the cover the costs. But we know yeah. we have the money for all five. Right. Yeah, five have, we have to have. That was that was in question before. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. sitting there. I yeah. found it. It's in Unibank. Yeah, right. under the care of the treasurer. Yeah, and obviously. she's been very helpful, by the way. I like to compliment her. So. And that is defined in the bylaw, so that it has to be done. It may be mentioned in the permits, but uh, that goes into a beneficial trust for the town as well. Because it's being held by and for the benefit of the town. Yes. We, we even actually keep the interest. I don't know that that's true. Well, we should, because um, that's how the bylaw reads. All right. I'll have to, I, you know, you're going back to the bylaw. I'm, I'm still in the permit. I haven't read the bylaw to mm -hmm. back up every statement. Uh, on the 91 Williamsville Road, they ha I said they had 45000 in there. They had more than that. But in 2016, they took out seventeen five. Seventeen thousand five hundred, and I've asked the treasurer to give me a report on how Why? that happened. I don't know. That's what I just said. Ninety-seven, I'm asked, 97 Williamsville. Is that what you said? A ninety-one Williamsville, the one that Cross was across from, from Scotts. Oh, interesting. And um, that was done first, too, wasn't it? Well, that's mm, no, that's, no, that's a separate. Third. I think. Yeah, they Pitcher were Road was the first. Though. First, and then the one on, second one on Williamsville was second, and then this one was and third. This was third. But anyway, my point is um, the treasurer will, I think, give me a report on how that money came out, why and when. Uh, she's the only one that can take money out. The, the treasurer, the town treasurer, is the only one authorized to take money out. Well, the and formula for that is predicated on the amount of electricity being generated, which then equates to the, the formula size. for decommissioning. Yes. All right. All right. The money that we take in. Is based on how big the, the project is. Which where's is based the Where's on the formula? Is it? I mean, is it in the bylaw or is this just is general? Uh, it's it's established by the state, and, it, okay. and it's when when Bill sets it up, he will check the values of a similar size project in a similar town and what it's worth, and that's how we determine it. And the state has a formula for how much they will pay based on the amount of power they're generating. So say so at the end of 20 years, they just walk away from this thing. Mm -hmm. and they're not going to take it all down. Who, how do we access that money? Do we, 
Would we have to sue the, 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 the no. homeowner or the homeowner? No, it would be the same, same as all these other situations. You, you go into a public hearing, and the purpose of the public hearing is to, uh, to decommission that based on the town taking over the authority to do so, which is done in the bylaw. It's given to us in the bylaw. We just ha we always have a public hearing for all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. At the end of the public hearing, we say we've got X number of dollars. We're going to do it, and we go out and we hire somebody to do it and okay. ask for bills. And it okay. should come out to be equivalent to the amount of money that mm -hmm. we have, of course. So. Prior to the issuance of a building permit, security shall be posted with the town in such form and amount as required by the planning board to secure the satisfactory completion of all or any part of the work authorized under this permit and to cover the cost of removal in the event the town must remove the installation or remediate the landscape. So we, we stake our claim on that money. So even this, this just going back to Scott's thing again, we have that forty-five thousand dollars. We could actually use part of that decommissioning money. Well, then it's not no. available for decommissioning. No, it's just. But then we could have them pay for it. You know. No, that oh. we would we could force them to pay for what we want them to do, but we couldn't touch their decommissioning money. Okay. That's specific for that purpose. I thought Tom just said that we could actually. No, no. That's well. We let me let me read it again. I think I think it does. Let me read it again. It says you can use that money for enforcing the this Any permit. part of the work authorized under this permit. Satisfactory, um, let me read it again. Prior to issuance of a building permit, security shall be posted with the town in such form and amount as is required by the planning board to secure the satisfactory completion of all or any part of the work authorized under this permit and to cover the cost of, of removal in the event the town so there's, there's removal and there's any other stuff. Sounds like Completion. it. And this is indeed the the Scott one I'm reading. Right. They're all a little different. Um, so this money is sitting there. They've already escalated from year one to 20, and now it's sitting there earning some small percentage in the trust fund as as invested by Unimet. Mm. And there's some pretty strict regulations on what they can invest it in. There's a, every year the Department of Revenue puts out a list of what you can and cannot invest in, or what you can invest in. And it's uh, pretty restrictive. Mm. There's no gambling, there's no you know speculative, uh, highly speculative investments. But we haven't gotten any, y most of those things also ask for report yearly. Um, the treasurer, I think, gets an annual report. From the companies? From the Unimet. Oh, no, no, I'm talking about the solar systems and the, 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 the farms themselves. They're supposed to give us a permit of the condition and any maintenance they've done and everything. Report they've done. Yeah, a report. Yeah. Every year. Yes. And we've not, that I know of, at least for two years, I've, two years, I've well, known this, we've not received one. I, I took the first view of this thing with the money because money is no, pretty sense. easy. Yeah. You know, it's numbers you can. The, the softer requirements, um, informing us of change of ownership, informing us of the annual reports. Uh, I think they're even supposed to produce production rates and whatnot uh, mm -hmm. because they can make a claim that if their system is less than what it was supposed to, something happens, and if it's a lot more than something than it was supposed to, something happens. They can. Just you know, mm -hmm. so there are the non-monetary, non-financial requirements, which I haven't started to dig into yet, but uh, I will. I think that's the extent of my report. I asked the treasurer for the report of all the ins and outs of any of these funds, and I've asked her to tell me what they're invested in. Um, if it proves that the interest accrues to the town's advantage, or even if it accrues to the solar guy's advantage, we should see that it's invested wisely. Well, we you should, said we, that they're, they're pretty should, much, they, they invest it the way they Well, do. there's latitude. You can right. stick it in a CD or you can stick it in some stock. Mm -hmm. That's right. the ball game. But right. we, we know we have the money now because that was one of the questions. We have the money, and I think it's in the escalated form. 
Yeah. It's in the 20 year form, not in the. And she's going to get back to you on why that 17,000 was taken out? Yeah, well, she'll report a withdrawal. She wasn't here when it happened. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure she can tell us exactly why, but somebody should be able to. Let's hope so. Well, I, I don't think there's skullduggery. I, I think no, I don't. Just, no, I'm not saying just, that. Just, but uh, it was an erroneous. You know, a lot of times I, I don't want to say it. If, the if there's any, if there's any conspiracy involved, but they will do what they can to get their money back. You know, sometimes it's yeah. Tell, um, tell them, hey, you know, we've completed it, and if you know through their due diligence, then well, so they could they could go to the the the, uh, the town treasurer. And say we've completed everything on here, and says we get our money back. Give us our money back, and she would, she may just, or maybe. Well, the, the uh, also, if, if as Vince says, the Department of Revenue sets a formula for how much they're supposed to have set aside to decommission it, and they misapplied that formula, they overestimated the amount, That's and they reviewed it, it, and they said, no, we we have too much in there. We've overfunded it. Give us back the difference, yeah. and that that's very possible. Good job, Tom. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Work. And I will get up there with you. We'll go through, find these records. And well, that yeah, it shouldn't take long. But I, And I'm not sure what all the attachments are going to tell me. But I'd like to see a file. We really need to work on uh, maybe yes, maybe the answer is get it into the Register of Deeds and force them to do it and get us a receipt. And then we always know where to look. Yeah. And it's kind of free, you know. <laughs> they do the filing for us. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's the important. First. But that brings me to the last item. It's like, is there any way... Are you cutting any more wood this week? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm getting a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> talk yeah. to the barber. Don't yeah. think while he's cutting. Yeah. Talk. Uh, the only thing I have is access to the our planning board office. I, I, I went and got in there the other day, and Patty wasn't there for some reason. You know, I set aside some time to go there. But I, I think members of the planning board should either be allowed or have a key or whatever to go into that planning board office to work Good on the idea. files anytime we want. Because I can't, sometimes, we're all volunteers. Yeah, and time is. Time is like, I mean, I have some time, you know, a, a couple hours in the afternoon from 1 to 3 or something and it's on a Thursday and she's not there. I'd like us to make a suggestion. Um, why can't, Joyce, who's there a more extended time, I don't think she's there Friday. No. no. Um, why can't she have keys so that any of us walk in, go over to Joyce, say, hey, Joyce, can you open this thing up for me? I want to look in this one, that one, that one. I would, I would. And then that. somebody's kind of knows we're there, knows we're in and out, and she locks up after we leave. And, and, the, and the building's open. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'll, I'll ask Brian about it. Something like but you, that. you agree then? I mean, because oh, it's absolutely. getting to be yeah, a real, yeah. so to me it's a real problem. I mean, I had like three hours, I could, uh, it started to rain, couldn't cut wood. <laughs> I had, no, I had like two or three hours I wanted to go up there, and I go up there when she's, you know, when she's supposed to be there, and she called yeah, me she sick. Called or something. sick, yeah. Um, you know, so it happens, and I, and I agree with you, because it, it really restricts what we want to do. I mean, to get into these solar files like Tom wants to do, we have to be able to get in there get it, you know, and some, it could take three or four hours sometimes. I know when I was doing that with the gravel pits and it's like, you know, he goes, well, I have to, you know, I have to leave. So now I have to leave, you know, it's kind of a pain in the neck. Yeah. Now she, she turned up something for me yesterday and I told her I'd come back today and look at her and she had them tucked over on the side for yeah. me and I didn't get a chance to. But now like tomorrow I can't get to them, you know. Like tomorrow, tomorrow morning, that's she right. wanted to go over tomorrow, there. Tomorrow, everybody's closed. Well, we're she's closed. closed, yeah. Yeah, we're closed. So why but Thursday, they're open. This, the building's open. The building's open, but the office yeah, is open. Yeah, I don't want a key to the building or necessarily a key to the office, but I'd like to be able to. I don't need any I, keys as long as somebody over there has one. Right, and I think so Joyce why did you lie need. to her about you showing up today? <laughs> I, uh, I failed to execute my own schedule. <laughs> I think we all do that from time to time. Yeah, so I do yeah. it every freaking day. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's my suggestion. And then Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, no, let's work on that, too. 
I think that's. I think it's, it's getting, especially this winter. It's going to get with all this other stuff going on. We're going to need to get it. Well, in. the other, the last thing that we need to do, and I, I have to get this done sometime this month. I think by the 18th is a budget. So if anybody's got any ideas, the only idea I have for our budget is to buy more file cabinets for the winter because I think we're going to need them. Is it a capital budget or a labor? It's a capital budget for you well, know, for the town meeting. I think Brian we need wants we everybody to have it in, so we I need to do that. I think we need a new building to put the cabinets in because I don't think there's any room over there. I know, it's tough. How about scanning capability? We ought to really be thinking about moving to electronic files. And if we get a application like we got today, um, either require the applicant to come in with a complete electronic version on a disk or a thumb drive or something, and we start, we have an, uh, a consultant, you know, we don't want to make this a do-it-yourself project, we have a consultant come in and help us develop the file system. And we start putting these things in electronically. Because the application isn't the thing that will ultimately end up in the registry of deeds. You know, right. it'll change over time and it gets modified and we end up with something. That's the work product. But all the intermediate documents, all the emails and all this stuff, like Bill, I don't, I don't know. Does Bill have a town email system? I know I don't. No, <laughs> um, why don't we budget a planning board town email system? Uh, we should all have our own email address that's part of the town I've system. I've been fighting that for three years. So. Well, put money in for it and buy it. That's that's a answer. It's like going to the meeting. If you don't make a motion, nothing happens. So what would that cost? You looked into it. I looked into it. it was uh, it would be like two hundred fifty dollars. That's all for all of us. For all of us. Five of us. Yeah, it's like fifty dollars a person. Put in five hundred, and and uh, we get our own email. But you have to get it. the approval of the select board and the town administrator. Well, yeah, but if you walk into the town meeting vote that says they gave you the money, how can they not approve it? And the state law says we're supposed to have it. The state law. That's why I went to that Yahoo. I mean, to the Google address that I have. Yeah, but that was a makeshift. That was a. a well, it's a make. Well, what it is is when I leave, this you know, if I'm off the planning board, and I've talked to Joyce Green about this, who's the records creeper, I'm going to give her the password, and I'm basically going to give her the information. Well, what's my effect. obligation when I leave the planning board? You're Am I supposed to turn up all my old emails? Yes, you are. You're supposed to either print what them. What a project! You're either supposed to print them and give them to the town. Or you're supposed to give them an electronic, electronic copy of everything. That's why I went to. I have. That's why I insisted. If you guys send me on my personal email, I just forward it to my planning board email, so I have everything on that. How long is our term on this board? Five years. That's a lot of emails. I Not think anymore. delete them. If I don't after I read them and I don't need them anymore, I delete then them. You're a violation of the open <laughs> meeting law or the records law. We're going to jail, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. Well, anything this, you this say whole area <laughs> will be used against you. I think we ought to budget some um, consultant. Br bring us into the new century, um, both from an email point of view and from a uh, files point of view. And if the rest of the town doesn't go there, that's the rest of the town's problem. Let's budget ourselves some money. And move in that direction. Well, maybe that's what we should think. Yeah. What we should think of doing is getting to make a couple calls. Get a figure. Yeah, get a number, and get everyone. Basically, take all of our files and digitize all of our files. That okay. Was the thing. So, well, not the whole cabinets over there. They got stuff that's twenty years old. But if you could just draw a line in the sand and say, well, January first, two thousand eighteen. From now on, we're going to do it this way. Right. And do the best we can. I don't think we have to go back. New applicant, get them to do everything electronic. Uh, so we have the electronic. So you so we have that. So we, we, we would need storage for the planning board and everything. We probably need a server. Yeah. We probably need, we'll need some hardware, some software, I don't some think consulting need a time. They just need a. Well, I don't know what the place has for a server. They don't, don't, don't have my emails on. Yeah, emails are kind of. Expensive. I've know, been fighting this fight for. <coughs> many wait a minute. This is this is important because, in my opinion. There's only one way we're going to solve this problem. 
that's somebody who is much younger and oh, no. <laughs> well. And therefore, I'm going to defer to Craig. You know more about this technology what are your ideas? than we do. Well, speak. We need to know. Well, I disagree with you. I think if you're going to go that route, you should do everything just not going forward. Just so at least everything is in one spot now. You haven't seen this, huh? Well, I, I know it will probably be worse, but, you know. Well, none of that is useless work. There's so well, much, stuff, I, I, not, there's I, so much yeah. stuff in there I mean, that not, doesn't matter. Not really, though, because, I mean, you guys refer to these files all the time. So, I mean, obviously there's stuff in there. I mean, maybe well, some good stuff. Maybe there's some stuff you could, like, put in a separate filing cabinet saying, you know, we need to keep this, but we'll just keep it here type of deal. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah, that works. Like, like all the earth removal permits that we have should be under digitized. Uh, yeah. digitized. I mean, there's certain things that need, really need to be digitized. But, I mean, we, we'd have to set up a file. Like, and this is, the, this is the problem is you have to have someone in the town capable of saying, okay, we get this new solar project. So you put in, you make a new folder. And everything that happens on that project goes into that folder. Yeah. If that's what you're talking and, about. And, and we've got to have some search capability. If we want to learn about Marinelli, we should be able to press in Marinelli and up comes all this. Yeah, search, yeah. keyword yeah. search. Yeah. yeah. And you know, all, all but I, don't, type of I only know that I like to use those things. I don't know how to build those things. That's, that's why we have use yeah. with us. I know I have tech with the highway department. <laughs> 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 it's, it's, not that hard. Young. it's really not hard to, to build no, something like that, to do that. The problem it's is so hard that we haven't done it. No, it's not hard we to do it. We haven't had any ideas. We have to have, first off, we, we would have to have access to the town server. Okay, oh. and you'd have to get to the person who runs the server to see if there's enough storage capability there, in there. there there's got to be people oh, out sure there making their living doing this with other towns. And my suggestion would be bring in a pro and <coughs> say, what is this all about? How much is it? How much does it cost? Are we crazy or can you do this? Let's get prices on it, yeah. And, and bring in a pro. This is not a do-it-yourself type. Yeah, oh, yeah. that is absolutely no, no. Okay, well, that's... I agree with the email thing, though, because, I mean, you know, if you got to keep at least five years' worth of emails and most of us, or some of us, use the free email service, I mean, you only get so much... Yeah, it falls off. Yeah, so much storage space on that before it just starts deleting things. It's seven years. Oh, yeah. seven have years. to keep it for seven years? Mm -hmm. yeah. Does it actually delete yeah. it, or does it just say to you no more space? It, it probably works. tells you no more space, but what are you supposed to do at that point? <laughs> yeah, they, you, you either delete some yourself, yeah, or, or you they drop it off by date. Yeah. But, um, I mean, my computer could fall down a well. What do I do then? Get a wet hand whack on <laughs> <laughs> it's not a storage disk. So it's not stored on your computer, is it? All your emails. No, but other documents are. Yeah. Oh, other okay. planning board documents yeah. are. Like, wrote some, like today. I just presented a simple yeah. little little one page yeah. thing. Yeah. That's, that's a true. work product. That's a public document, and I've got it home on my disk. Because Microsoft 360 has all that capabilities. What do you mean? All right, let's let's storage all that stuff. We'll work on that. Let's move on. What else? Anybody got anything else? We gotta kill this one. Come on, I can't get home by four eighty by nine o'clock. All right. Want a motion? Make motion. I mean, if we're satisfied, uh, we got a list of stuff that we gotta do, and yeah. I'm happy to get. Oh, we need to set a date for the January meeting to to do um, the work. The work date for the. No, I, I can't do that till January. I mean, this this would be the best time for me to do it. Would be at the January meeting to do the work. But no, no, we said we were going to have a separate working meeting. Correct, that's what I mean. You want to set the meeting date in January? In January. Okay, so yep. we're going to wait till January meeting, January 3rd, to, to set those times. Right. So we'll have a better idea of our schedule. And did you say that the January 3rd meeting was at 6 p.m.? Yes, because we're going to have Mr. Hume from the NRPC. So if we will ask him to do our, his presentation at 6. Okay. From there. Thank you. Unless he changes, if he doesn't come in, then we'll go to 6.30, mm -hmm. we'll know before then. Okay. Anything else, Craig? What else you got? Nothing? We got nothing. Ken, you all set? I am all set. Tom? I'm, all I'm set. good. I'm just going to ask Craig a question when he's done. Well, 
then I motion to adjourn. No, 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 no. Oh, sorry. sorry. Two things. I, I wish to extend all of you and to all our viewership out there. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah. Hope everybody has happy holidays. And say good night to Mrs. Calabash wherever she is. Yeah. Motion adjourned. Second. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Opposed? Yeah. Don't vote. Okay, Craig. Why are they just putting salt on the roads instead of sand? And salt. I know. I know. Is it, and won't that have an effect on the plants on the roadside? Or is this affect those salt? There is salt in the sand, anyways. I know, but not to the quantity that. I this is.